Today I'm going to show you how to print variable data with principal fulfillment. Specifically, we're going to do um, envelopes with variable data address printing. And if you've never used principal fulfillment before, I have tons of videos of them here on my channel and you can use my link for $25 off your first order. Now I love their variable data printing service. It usually comes out to like five or six dollars uh, to add this on to any piece and it's really got so many uses that I think you'll really start to enjoy it once you realize how to use it. So what is variable data printing? It basically means you're printing the same product, like the same paper size and finish, but you are printing a different design on each page. So we use this a lot for addresses. For instance, these are set up for envelope addressing and we have all of the different names and addresses that we need, but we do want them printed on the same let's say blush colored envelope in the same size A7. If you want some information about how to actually set this up, I'm using Adobe InDesign and a tool called Data Merge and I have other videos on that, but let's assume for now that you have already watched that video and you have your file already set up. You can use variable data printing for escort cards, place cards, table numbers is a great example. There's so many options here. I also like to use it for signage. If I have like 10 different signs that are all the same size, I'm gonna use variable data printing for that because it's a little bit cheaper and just easier to order it all at once instead of ordering all of those separately. If your printer has a minimum quantity, it's a great option to do variable data printing to get to that minimum quantity if you have a bunch of smaller orders. But I would say most commonly it's used for address printing, which is what we're going to show today. I have this file set up at five by seven. Typically Princewell requires a one eighth inch bleed on all four sides. I'm going to set this up to the exact size of the envelope because when you're printing on envelopes, they can't do bleeds. If you're not sure about bleeds, uh, watch the video that's in the corner. <laughs> I'm going to assume a little level of knowledge so we can get through this kind of quickly, but I have videos that show you um, how to set up these files and everything if you want to check those out. If you ever have trouble setting up your files with Princewell Fulfillment, you can always click this need help button and download a bunch of information about their specific file specifications. One thing I love is their system will also tell you if you have the file sized incorrectly or something. So you'll have that level of uh, kind of check in there to make sure that you did it correctly. So we set this up to five by seven, but the envelope is actually 5.25 by 7.25. So I'm gonna show you how to add that through a bleed. This would be also how you would add it for just a flat card that you're using. So I think it's helpful to see that. So we'll just go into export from InDesign and you don't really need to do much on this page. Um, just make sure all your pages are selected if you want them. And if you need to add bleeds, then you can do that right here. You can either have the document setting bleeds, which currently are zero, there's nothing there, or you can just add them manually like I'm doing here. And Princewell typically requires that 1 8 which is 0.125 inch bleed. For envelopes, they want it to be the exact size of the envelope, but it happened, it just so happens that that's exactly what I need here. And then I'll click export. And I really like to just have it show me the PDF after exporting so I can flip through and make sure that everything looks good and is exactly how I want it and I didn't miss anything obvious. Now we'll go into our portal in Princewell and we'll click start order. Our product type for this one is going to be envelopes and we're going to select A7. There's where it gives you that exact size that you need. And let's do this on blush. Now, when you're doing variable data printing, it doesn't actually matter what quantity you select, but I will go ahead and select our quantity, which is 40. And when you upload your file for variable data printing, it'll update the quantity based on how many pages are in your file. So you have the option to print on the, the front and the back of the envelope, and you have the option to do variable data on one of them, but not both of them, because it's really hard for them to match up exactly which front would go with which back in that case. Uh, typically we just do the return address on the back that's not variable and then we do the variable fronts for the guest addresses. So I'm just going to click as if we're just doing that and then we'll just upload our PDF here and it will tell us right here if we have it in the wrong size and then we can go back and change it. But you'll get a preview of what the first page looks like and it will update um, the quantity here with how many pages are in your file. If you want some extras, you might need to put some extra pages in your file, or you can always just re-update that quantity to a higher number here if you want more. So if we wanted 50, we could just add 10, and they would send those to us blank. Now here we get to choose if we'd like liners for the envelopes, and if we do select that, they, will line, they do have the option to line the envelopes for us or send them separately. We're just gonna do the printed envelopes for now 
And here we see we have the Euroflap envelopes in blush. Those are 33 cents each. We have the envelope imprinting. Those are 25 cents each. And then you see we have the variable data printing surface. It's always going to add up to 550 per product. And then we will just add this to cart. And that's really all there is to it. You can do variable data with anything that you want. So if you want a flat card, we'll do a seven on the 120. This is my standard for like table numbers and things. And you can just toggle on this option that says, will this be variable data print? And as you can see, your order quantity bill will be based on the number of pages in the provided print drop. One caveat with variable data printing on regular cards is if you want it to print on the front and the back, you can't upload a file where it's variable data for the fronts and one single file that will be on every back. You'll need to set up the file in one PDF such that it alternates front and back. So for instance, on this one, we wanted the name on the front and the table number on the inside. This is a folded card. So the back of John's card would be page two. Page three is Justin and the back of his card will be page four and so on and it alternates all the way down. So you can use data merge to set that up in InDesign. Again, watch those videos if you're not familiar with data merge, uh, but in general, it's a good option for setting up your variable data prints. So I hope this video helped you get started with variable data printing from Principal Fulfillment. I have a ton of other videos with them on my channel if you want to learn about some of the other products that they offer. If you use my link, you will get $25 off your first order. And as you can see, they offer things like coasters, belly bands, gift tags, lots of different folded options, magnets, notepads, just so many amazing things that you can order here with Principal Fulfillment, especially if you're interested in becoming a full-time stationery designer. This is going to be an awesome tool to add to your tool belt. So check them out. Let me know what you think and what questions you have about variable data printing. Thanks everyone.